Welcome to the 385th episode of the Reading and Writing Podcast. Stay tuned for my interview with author K.A. Perry, author of the debut novel, The Green Beach File. Stay tuned for the interview. The Reading and Writing Podcast is brought to you by Libro FM. Libro.fm lets you purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore. You can pick from more than 185,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company out there, but you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community and your local bookstore. If you're new to audiobooks, they're the perfect way to get more books into your busy life. You can listen during your commute, while doing chores, walking the dog, or just relaxing at home. All you need is a smartphone and the free Libro.fm app. If you already love audiobooks and don't know what to listen to next, check out recommendations and curated lists from people who know audiobooks best your local bookseller. Here's your special offer from the Reading and Writing Podcast. Get two audiobooks for the price of one today with your first month of membership with the code RWPODCAST at checkout. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the U.S. Check out Libro.fm today. Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is K.A. Perry, author of the debut novel, The Green Beach File. K.A., welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. If someone hasn't heard about your debut novel yet, The Green File, how would you describe the novel to them? The Green Beach File is an environmental thriller. It's very suspenseful. And it's a lot of fun, which keeps the reader turning the pages until the very end. A lot of folks are saying that it's hard to put down. And I think that's a good thing nowadays with books. And so do you remember the original idea that led you to write The Green Beach File? I do. I was standing behind an independent bookstore and there was an ice cooler behind the bookstore, which was really out of place. And for some reason that planted a seed in my head about uh, why that was there. It was actually a moment a number of years ago and it, I just went from there with the novel. And had you written fiction before you sat down and wrote The Green Beach File? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I said, had had you written fiction before you sat down to write this novel? So I had written fiction as part of my education, but I really hadn't written much fiction in years and years. I'd always dreamed of writing a bestseller, though. When I was a kid, my mother used to write, she wrote like a historical book about the area where I grew up in Pennsylvania. And I always said to her, why don't you try to write like something that the bulk of people are going to enjoy. So I think it was just this long thing in the back of my brain that I wanted to write creatively, but I never really took the time to do. Well, it's my understanding that you work as an environmental lawyer. Did that background show up in the Green Beach file? Yes, it, it very much did. I used to work in a large firm as an environmental attorney, and I learned a lot about environmental laws and regulations and public access to beachfront. And I saw a lot of land disputes and a lot of conflict. And so I took that experience and I turned it into a fictional novel that raises a lot of serious environmental issues, but in a lighthearted way so that it's an enjoyable read. So you mentioned earlier, you saw this ice machine behind this independent bookstore and that kind of sparked an idea for you. What was the creative process after that? Did you just sit down and just start writing? Did you play around with ideas and write a plot? What was the kind of creative process like for you? For me, I just start writing. I don't necessarily have a great outline ahead of time. I just try to really uh, drill down into the moment and think through every little detail in a logical fashion to be able to, to, to create a scene or to create an image that will people will be left with after they've read it. Now that the Green Beach file (laughs) has been published, 
Are you working on another novel? I am working on a sequel to the novel because a lot of folks want to know what happens to the main character. And so I've been working hard on getting that finished and getting it done so that folks aren't disappointed and we can and they can find out what happens next. When you were working on the Green Beach file or even before you started writing it, are there writers or books that kind of inspire you and that uh, make you feel creative or that you had in mind when you were working on this book? So I used to work in an independent bookstore and I used to read a lot of the mystery shelf and a lot of those authors and their main characters I had thought quite a bit about and I crafted this character to fit on that mystery shelf. You see a lot of private investigators and of course the bounty hunter and of course district attorneys, but you hadn't really seen a private practice lawyer that wasn't uh, a type A personality that wasn't like a superhero. And if you read the back cover of the book, you'll see it's a little bit of a different quirky female legal sleuth than was typically found on the mystery shelf. And so how I, is, she, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I was just going to say, I think you would ask me who had inspired me. Well, I was certainly inspired by a lot of those authors like Nevada Barr and Lisa Scotaline. And of course, going back in time, some of the older ones that I read coming into adulthood. But I really tried to find a new niche in the mystery field that hadn't been done yet and use the environmental expertise that I have. I know that there are a lot of people who are listening who may have had an idea at some point for a novel or a mystery novel specifically. But in your case, you had this idea, you saw this thing and it sparked an idea and you sat down and wrote the novel. What advice would you give for someone who may be listening and thinking about writing their own novel? I think. You just have to keep working at something and keep trying at it and not let your dreams fall by the wayside. I've certainly a lot of time passed between when I first had the spark for the novel and when I completed it. I do have four children and I now I have a small town law practice. I think you just have to keep working at the things that you really want in life. And so what has been the reception so far to the Green Beach file? It's been fantastic. People are really enjoying it, and they're really writing wonderful reviews about it, and they're interested in this quirky character because she's pretty She's pretty unique in some ways that she's introverted and she has pet trees, but she's someone everyone can relate to because I think most folks really enjoy nature and the time spent outside in nature, and often folks get respite or recharged or their batteries refilled by being outside or going for a hike. And I think folks understand that. And so she's an easily related to character and folks get really invested in what happens to her. Now more than ever, it's important for you and your family to enjoy the spaces you're in most often. Visit fergusonshowrooms.com to shop online or schedule a personalized consultation to meet with our experts at your local Ferguson bath, kitchen and lighting gallery. Together, we'll help you make the most of home and create a space you'll love to live in. Get started on your project and discover extraordinary products like the Pro Grand Range by Thermidor. That's great. What novels or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed and that you would mention? I would have to mention Where the Crawdads Sing because when I read that book, I was amazed at her sort of detailed writing about nature. And it reminded me of my own to stop and to really look and analyze and appreciate it for the, its unique beauty and its special characteristics. And the amazing way the environment is all woven together almost in a puzzle or a, a way that supports all the different parts of it. That's great. So where can people find you online if they would want to learn more about you and your novel? So I do have a website, kaperry.com. I am on Instagram now, which is kaperry, you know, underscore author. And I have a Facebook page, of course, kaperry. And I'm hoping to get the second one done fairly shortly so that people still remember the main character and want to know what happens next to her and are able to find out. And I, what I'd like to do is use, or what I'm working on doing is using a different environmental media for each 
book, The Green Beach File, is really about beach rights and beach access. And the next novel is really about a different part of the environment. That's a great concept for for novels. Again, we've been speaking with K.A. Perry, author of the debut novel, The Green Beach File. The novel is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And K.A., thanks for doing this interview. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Now, stay tuned as author K.A. Perry reads from her debut novel, The Green Beach File. Chapter 30. Jen woke up again with Dr. Tillman's face in her mind, the dried blood on his right temple, the vacant eyes. When was this going to stop? Enough about the dead body. And it was really not a pleasant waking thought. Jen liked it when she woke up to much more pleasant dreams. She thought for a minute about the break-in the night before. Did that happen? Downstairs, she saw that yes, the iPad had been smashed and her briefcase had been searched. As she poured her coffee, orange juice, milk, and water, she wondered whether she should do anything about it. While she sampled her morning drinks, she thought that maybe she should call Matt. He would brighten up her Sunday, but maybe it was better to let it go. They took nothing, and now, whomever it was who had broken in, knew she knew nothing. She didn't know who was murdering folks. She didn't know why there were salamander eggs near Dr. Tillman's body. She didn't know why the state archaeologist would visit Riverfront Landing on a weekend. If the murderer thought she were on to him or her, they were sadly mistaken. She was just as clueless as any other citizen of Mayfield, maybe even more so since her head was in the trees, according to Claire. While she contemplated all of this, Jen's iPhone rang. Jen, it was Claire. What are you doing today? Any chance you could take Sophia for us this morning? Sure, said Jen, in her usual doormat manner. She hadn't even planned her day yet. It was free for, for the filling. Her days off from work were so infrequent, partially because she worked lots of Saturdays, that sometimes when she had no work, she didn't know how to occupy her time. Excellent. Hey, Claire, could you bring her up here? There's something I want to show you at my house. I could use Peter's and your opinions. What's up? Just come up and I'll show you. What time are you thinking? We'll be there around 1030. Okay, see you then. Jen took her four drinks out to the patio and contemplated the day's weather. It looked like another good beach day. She might take Sophia to the beach, depending on how long they wanted a babysitter. After Jen was fully hydrated, she decided to take on at least one house chore before the day got away from her. She looked around the yard and thought for a moment about the possibilities. Guess it was weeding time again. That was the trouble with weeding. You couldn't just do it once. It was a never-ending chore, like laundry. Jen went to the front of the house and got to work. The temperature was rising quickly. The deep brown wood chips along her front walk were interlaced with pale green weeds. She dug in and started working, but only a moment passed, and she heard a car in the driveway. She headed back outside to greet her brother and family, surprised to find her mom instead. She jumped out of her car with the urn for Jen's dad's ashes in her hand. Jen! Jen, I'm sorry I was so upset yesterday. I'm better today, her mom said. They were still standing in the garage hugging when Peter, Claire, and Sophia pulled into the driveway. Jen and her mom, Linda, stopped hugging and turned to watch the family exit the car. Sophia came running over. Nana, Aunt Jen, she called as she got closer and gave them each a hug. Everybody, come on in, said Jen, and her family followed her in through the garage. Would anyone like a drink, asked Jen, smiling. Her family knew all about her love of multiple drinks at once and often took her up on having a couple of beverages each while visiting her house. Coffee and tea, please, said Peter. Diet Coke and lemonade, said Claire. Apple juice and milk, chimed in Sophia with a huge smile. Her mom said, how about water? And I know it's early, but also a glass of white wine. Jen got to work making all the beverages. She had her back to the kitchen table when she heard Peter exclaim, Jen, I know you complain about work sometimes, but really don't take it out on your iPad. Oh, I didn't. Oh, everyone turned to look at her. Uh-oh, should she tell them the truth? 
They didn't like her all alone out in the woods in this house. It would only make them worry more. They thought she should be in a nice condominium with closer neighbors and less outside maintenance. Jen, said her mom, reading her daughter's face, what happened? Someone broke in last night while I was sleeping. They must have dropped the iPad on the floor twice while they were shuffling through my papers. Look at my briefcase. I woke in the night out of a strange dream to what I think was the sound of the iPad hitting the floor. Someone broke in, said Claire. Well, I don't remember locking the door. Someone just kind of walked in. I guess it was really a walk-in, tried Jen, hoping a little humor would lighten the mood. Jen, you didn't call the police yet, did you? You need to call the police. You know you do, said Peter. I just don't want to trouble anyone, said Jen. Really, it wasn't a big deal. It was just a little break-in. They didn't take anything and they didn't hurt anyone. It's probably a little bit my fault for forgetting to lock the door. Jen, it's not your fault. You need to take this seriously, Linda said. What if it was the murderer in your house last night? After she said this, she took a big swig of her wine and glared at Jen, her eyes bulging. Now more than ever, it's important for you and your family to enjoy the spaces you're in most often. Visit fergusonshowrooms.com to shop online or schedule a personalized consultation to meet with our experts at your local Ferguson bath, kitchen, and lighting gallery. Together, we'll help you make the most of home and create a space you'll love to live in. Get started on your project and discover extraordinary products like the Pro Grand Range by Thermador. 